In the high-stakes world of military aviation, a fascinating drama is unfolding. While the U.S. Air Force hits pause on its next-generation fighter program, the U.S. Navy is charging full steam ahead with its own sixth-generation fighter jet, the mysterious FAXX. But with costs potentially reaching hundreds of millions per aircraft, one question looms large. Why does the Navy need this expensive new fighter so badly? The replacement crisis. Let's start with the Air Force's comfortable position. They've got 183 F-22 Raptors each with about 4,000 hours of life left. They're rolling out a $10.5 billion upgrade program to keep them dominant until 2040s. Supporting this air superiority force are over 400 F-35A Lightning IIs, with plans for 1,763 total, providing advanced stealth and sensor fusion capabilities across the force. The Air Force is also fielding 144 new F-15 EX Eagle IIs, which can carry massive 29 500-pound payloads and hypersonic weapons, while maintaining 218 upgraded F-15E Strike Eagles with advanced electronic warfare capabilities. Additionally, near Nearly 1,000 F-16 Fighting Falcons, many with modern ESA radars and upgraded systems, form the backbone of their tactical fighter force. With this diverse and capable fleet, the Air Force can comfortably pause their next-generation air dominance program. But the Navy? They're in a completely different situation. Let's break down the Navy's current predicament. They're juggling three different fighter types, each with a crucial role. First, the F-A-18 Super Hornet, their heavyweight champion. It can carry 17,750 pounds of weapons, fight for over 400 nautical miles without refueling, and deliver the Navy's most powerful anti-ship missiles. But the medal is literally timing out. The Navy's F-A-18E F fleet averages 6,000 flight hours per airframe. Each catapult launch subjects the aircraft to 3.3 Gs of acceleration stress, each landing up to 7.5 Gs of impact force. The airframe experiences metal fatigue equivalent to three years of normal use in just one six-month carrier deployment. The Navy's tried everything. The Service Life Modification Program costs $7.5 million per aircraft and adds 3,000 flight hours. But it's like putting a Band-Aid on a broken arm. By 2030, over 60% of the Super Hornet fleet will hit their absolute flight 9,000-hour limit. The EA-18G Growler situation is even more critical. These specialized electronic warfare aircraft carry the ANALQ-2118 tactical jamming receiver and ANALQ-99 tactical jamming pods, capabilities that no other platform in the U.S. military possesses. To support carrier operations, the Navy requires at least 50 operational growlers at any given time. However, the Growler is built on the same aging airframe as the Super Hornet. By 2028, the Navy will struggle to keep even 30 of these vital aircraft operational. Now, the F-35C, incredible stealth, advanced sensors, network warfare capabilities that seem like science fiction. But here's what most people don't realize, it wasn't designed to replace the Super Hornet or Growler. Let me show you why. The F-35C's internal weapons bay can only carry 5,000 pounds of ordnance while maintaining stealth. That's less than one-third of what the Super Hornet can haul. Its combat radius? About 670 nautical miles. Impressive, but not enough to strike Chinese targets while keeping carriers safely out of range of their newest anti-ship missiles. And electronic warfare? The F-35's integrated systems are impressive, but they're designed for self-protection, not the wide-area jamming that carrier strike groups need for deep penetration missions. It's like comparing a personal shield to a force field that can protect an entire fleet. On the other side, the F-35C, while incredible, brings its own set of challenges. Mission-capable rates hover between 50 to 60 percent, while the complex stealth coding requires constant maintenance from specialized technicians. Even more concerning, its weapons capacity is severely limited without compromising its stealth characteristics. Fast forward to 2030, the Super Hornets are timing out, the Growlers can't maintain coverage, and the F-35C, despite its revolutionary capabilities, simply can't fill these gaps. Each carrier air wing needs multiple types of fighters for different missions. It's not a one-size-fits-all situation. But here's the truly scary part. The aging aircraft crisis isn't even the Navy's biggest problem. There's a far more dangerous threat emerging in the Pacific. The China Challenge. The vastness of the Pacific Ocean, once guaranteed American carriers could strike with impunity. Those days are over. Imagine you're commanding a U.S. carrier strike group in the Western Pacific. Your radar screen lights up, 
Chinese DF-21D missiles just launched from the mainland. In the time it takes to finish this sentence, they're already traveling at Mach 10, carrying warheads designed specifically to destroy aircraft carriers. And here's the terrifying part, your fighters can't even reach to their launch sites. Let me show you what this means in real terms. The F-A-18 Super Hornet, the Navy's current workhorse, can strike targets about 500 nautical miles away. The newer F-35C pushes that to 670 nautical miles. Impressive, right? Right? Not anymore. China's DF-21D, nicknamed the Carrier Killer, can strike ships from over 800 nautical miles away. Its bigger brother, the DF-26, doubles that range to 2,000 nautical miles. And these aren't just experimental weapons, they're deployed right now in increasing numbers along China's coast. Think about what this means for our carrier commanders. To launch strikes with current fighters, they must sail their $13 billion carrier with its crew of 5,000 sailors within range of these hypersonic weapons. It's like bringing a knife to a gunfight, except you have to walk through the shooter's kill zone just to get close enough to use your blade. Since World War II, aircraft carriers have been America's ultimate power projection tool. They could park off any coastline in the world and deliver overwhelming air power. But China has changed that equation. This is where the FAXX comes in. The Navy isn't just building another fighter, they're creating a weapon that changes the rules of the game. Picture an aircraft that can strike targets over 1,000 nautical miles away, flying so fast and so high that even the most advanced air defenses struggle to engage it. Its stealth isn't just about hiding from targeting radars. The FAXX is being designed to defeat China's integrated early warning network, both high-frequency targeting radars and low-frequency search radars. When this jet penetrates enemy airspace, it might as well be invisible. But range and stealth are just the beginning. The FAXX will cruise at supersonic speeds without afterburner, reaching threatened areas faster than any current fighter. Its electronic warfare capabilities will be so advanced that it can protect itself and other aircraft from the most sophisticated air defense networks in the world. This isn't just about having a better fighter jet. It's about whether aircraft carriers, the backbone of American naval power for 80 years, can survive in an era of hypersonic missiles and thousand-mile kill zones. Without the FAXX, carriers might become floating targets. With it, they remain what they've always been, the most powerful expression of American military might. But the FAXX isn't just going to operate alone. The Navy has an even more revolutionary plan for how this aircraft will transform naval aviation forever. The future force multiplier, the future of naval aviation isn't about a single super weapon. It's about creating something far more powerful, a perfectly synchronized symphony of manned and unmanned aircraft, all conducting warfare at a level we've never seen before. Imagine a carrier air wing where every aircraft is connected, every sensor shares data instantly, and every weapon can be directed by any platform that spots a target. That's not science fiction, that's exactly what FAXX is designed to enable. Let's break down how this revolutionary fighter will transform naval aviation forever. At the heart of the carrier air wing, the FAXX won't just be another fighter. It'll be the maestro of an incredibly complex aerial orchestra. First, there's the partnership with the F-35C. Think of it as the ultimate tag team. The F-35C's advanced sensors can detect and track targets at incredible ranges, sharing that data instantly with the FAXX. Meanwhile, the FAXX can penetrate deeper into enemy airspace using its superior range and electronic warfare capabilities to strike targets the F-35C can't reach. Now, add the E-2D Hawkeye to this mix. Its powerful AN-APY-9 radar can track thousands of targets simultaneously creating a detailed picture of the battle space. The FAXX will take this information and act as a forward command post, directing strikes and responding to threats in real time. But here's where things get really interesting. The MQ-25 Stingray isn't just a tanker, it's the Navy's first step into autonomous naval aviation. Working with the FAXX, these unmanned tankers can extend combat missions far beyond what was previously possible, creating a web of aerial refueling that keeps fighters in the fight longer. And now we come to the real revolution the FAXX's role as a drone commander. Picture this, a single FAXX pilot controlling a swarm of up to five collaborative combat aircraft. These aren't simple drones, they're sophisticated autonomous fighters that can scout ahead, engage targets, and even take enemy fire to protect their human commander. The pilot becomes a tactical commander, directing these autonomous wingmen like pieces on a chessboard. Need to suppress enemy air defenses? Send in the drones. Spot a high-value target? The CCAs can strike while the FAXX remains safely outside the threat envelope. 
Imagine a strike mission deep in enemy territory. The FAXX leads a formation of autonomous fighters. The E-2D detects a threat. Instantly, the FAXX coordinates with nearby F-35s, sharing targeting data. CCAs sweep in to neutralize air defenses. The entire operation happens in seconds, with a level of coordination that would have been impossible just a few years ago. This isn't just an advancement in fighter technology. It's a fundamental transformation in how we conduct aerial warfare. The United States will be the first nation to field this kind of integrated manned, unmanned teaming system at sea, setting standards that other nations will struggle to match for decades. But achieving this vision won't be cheap. The question is, can the Navy actually afford to make it happen? The cost-effective approach, when the Air Force announced their NGAD fighter could cost up to $300 million per aircraft, three times the F-35's $80 million price tag, it sent shockwaves <clears throat> through the defense community. But the Navy's approaching the FAXX program with a radically different strategy that could revolutionize how we build combat aircraft. Let me take you inside the Navy's four-part strategy to build an advanced fighter without breaking the bank. The first game changer is the engine strategy. While the Air Force's NGAD program requires $6.7 billion just to develop new adaptive engines, the Navy's taking a smarter approach. They're evolving the F-135 engine that powers the F-35, which has already logged over 600,000 flight hours. By upgrading this proven design rather than starting from scratch, they're looking at development costs under $2 billion. The enhanced F-135 derivative will still deliver 46,000 pounds of thrust, enough to supercruise at Mach 1.5 while cutting development time by an estimated 40%. Here's what that means in practical terms. The Air Force's new engine won't be ready until 20. 32. The Navy's derivative engine could be flying by 2028, saving four critical years of development time and billions in testing costs. Now let's talk fleet economics. Currently, the Navy operates 538 FA-18EF Super Hornets at $70 million each, 160 EA-18G Growlers at $82 million each, 273 planned F-35Cs at $94.4 million each. That's three separate training programs, three maintenance pipelines, and three different supply chains. The annual maintenance cost per Super Hornet, $4.3 million. Each Growler, $5.1 million. By consolidating these platforms into a single FAXX fleet of approximately 400 aircraft, the Navy projects a 35% reduction in annual maintenance costs. In real numbers, that's a saving of nearly $1.5 billion per year in maintenance alone. Current fighter maintenance requires 127 different specialty qualifications among maintenance crews. The FAXX will reduce that to 64 specialties through advanced automation and simplified systems architecture. The manufacturing revolution is even more impressive. Using the same digital engineering approach that cut the B-21 Raiders' development time by 30%, the FAXX will be entirely designed and tested virtually before production. The Navy estimates this will eliminate 70% of production defects that typically plague new aircraft programs. The automated production line will use 80% fewer manual touch points than current fighter production, reducing assembly time from 18 months to just 9 months per aircraft. Modular construction means 60% of the aircraft systems can be upgraded without major structural work. Double the upgradability of current fighters. Let's break down the life cycle costs. A Super Hornet costs $44,000 per flight hour to operate. The FAXX, despite its advanced capabilities, is designed to operate at $38,000 per hour through automated diagnostics reducing inspection time by 40%, common parts reducing inventory costs by 50%, advanced materials extending service life to 12,000 flight hours, predictive maintenance cutting unscheduled repairs by 60%. Over a 30-year lifespan, a fleet of 400 FAXX fighters would save a approximately $15 billion in maintenance costs, $8 billion in training consolidation, $5 billion in logistics simplification, $4 billion in reduced manpower requirements. While each FAXX might cost around $200 million initially, the total life cycle cost would be 25% lower than maintaining separate fleets of current fighters. In military procurement, it's not just about the sticker price, it's about the total cost of ownership. The Navy's approach to the FAXX isn't just innovative, it's revolutionary. They're proving that next-generation capability doesn't require accepting next-generation costs. 